G'day there, hope you've had a cracker of a week. Well, we've got a crack of a show coming up today on Step Outside. We have fierce coral trout, mighty mackerel, barramundi in North Queensland, and some spectacular wakeboarding action. Plus, I'll teach you some simple techniques to get your hands on some fantastic live bait, and the secret signs buried in the sand to watch out when you're stepping outside that's going to give you the advantage over one of the most prized fish for the barbie. That's all coming up in today's show. Sit back, relax, it's time to step outside. I'm at the Anaconda store here at Rockhampton now where we are home to some of the best fishing action along the central coast of Queensland. And of course, with that, a careful part of gear selection must be made. You never know what you're going to hook, whether you're in the Fitzroy River chasing Barra or Jacks, or maybe up around Stanage Bay targeting Big Black Jew, or maybe even out on the reefs for GTs or trout, it doesn't matter. But today, we're gonna to be very careful with what we choose. Come on, and let's have a look. Now, once you know what sort of fish you might be targeting, it's important to work out the rod and the reel to suit that application. Pretty simple stuff. You're not going to use a short stroker kind of outfit such as this, where it's got hardly any movement on top. It's as thick as your finger on the tip. You're not going to feel a whiting or even a brim biting on that. You might catch one or two, but it's really not going to be enjoyable. For a big kingfish or a jewfish or something like that, totally different. But I'm going to go something much lighter here. I've picked out, in this case, the Raider two to five kilo outfit. It's a, a two piece, which is ideal. I can put it in the boot of the car or stow it away nice and easily without taking up too much room. But for here, it's got a beautiful light tip. Look at that. For this situation, I could pretty much cast a really light lure out or even a soft plastic, a vibe or even a small squidgy. And of course, with that, I can give it some work. I can get that lure to really work the motion. And when a bigger fish comes up and nails it, providing you got your drag set, you'll be able to pull it back with plenty of beef down the base. So a really good rod. Price point is affordable. It's a very good outfit, not the top of the range, but definitely not the bottom. For this outfit here, I'm going a two and a half thousand size reel. I think it's ideal. Uh, you can go for something like a Sedona, you could go for a Stratic or a Siena. It doesn't really matter what style of reel, providing it's an egg beater, of course, for this particular rod, but it's going to be smaller. I'll just whack him up and it's going to give me plenty of feel. I don't want to have it too heavy on the outfit because the simple fact is you're using lighter gear, lighter lures, uh, maybe a smaller jig head. If it's too heavy, it's going to be really cumbersome in the hand. You need to actually feel that, it's beautiful. You can put it up on your finger and it's absolutely ideal. And that is a perfect, perfect situation and for me, a perfect weight. And I can get out there and give that nice flick into the snags. When the fish hooks up, drag set, bang, straight on. I think we've got some tackle to get and then we're out of here. From Rocky, it's 30 minutes on the road and then another 30 on the ferry to Great Keppel Island. One of a precious few places where proper coral reef thrives so close to the mainland. Goodo is a Keppel fishing guru. So Goodo, tell me about this area, mate. It's pretty good fishing around here, lots of prominent rocks. Yeah, Paul, there's a heap of rocky outcrops with, you know, in the Keppel range here. So this is just one little place called Passage Rocks. Uh, this produces cod, uh, mackerel, Spanish mackerel, doggies, uh, spotties and greys. Um, if you get to a few uh, little reefs around the keppels, uh, there's coral trout. Uh, you, in the winter months you can get red emperor, red dew and all that sort of thing. Beautiful. Uh, normally you've got to go a little bit further just out the back around barren and outer. But uh, yeah, predominantly in close, you always get a fish, mate. So. And of course, wealth of knowledge, but also the main thing is for yourselves at home is nothing too big and bulky, just a nice little metal lure like so. That's the 40 gram Raider. Uh, it's a bait fish profile, basically. Are you using yeah. something similar? Yeah, yeah. So the bait fish we have around here are, are of that size, yep. uh, if not a little bit bigger, but um, the bigger the lure, the bigger the fish, of course. So. <laughs> All right, let's go fishing and see if we can have a crack at one. Fish? Yeah. I think it's a cod. Hey, it is a good cod. So do you let the lure sink down there? No, Bird? mate, I'll just let it hit the surface. It's a bit too shallow to let, let it hit the ground. Right, eh? Fair enough. There we go, feeling a little bit of line there. So tell me the... Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, it's a little coral trout oh, no. on a silver. Oh. <laughs> Lovely. Nice Beautiful work. little fish. Are you serious? Hey? Yeah, we go with that one. Unbelievable. Hey, lovely. Tell me, mate, I mean, the, the leader, you're running fairly hefty leader. You've got a scimitar 4,000 reel. 
about 60 pound litre opposed to my yeah. smidgy. Yeah. Look at yeah. the colours He's on He's a that. beautiful little fish, isn't he? Stick around, more Keppel coming up after the break. For 20 years, Great Keppel was the big tourism destination in this region. But for the past decade, the main resort has been closed. Locals have had it all to themselves. And in 10 years, the fish numbers have exploded. The result? The waters here, teeming with life. There we go. So what he's done, come here buddy, is he's come right up and had a look at it as I sunk it to the bottom. And unfortunately, when he's come in to have a bit of a sticky beak, I've had a sticky beak with a rod tip and jerked it and hooked him up. But all right, see you later, buddy. Good luck. Go get your mum. A trout, oh, dad. a cod, and then Goodo hooked onto something with a whole lot more power. No, we don't have a gaff. Where the hell so we'll, we'll get bring up by and we'll just... There are similar rock platforms like this set up throughout the island chain and countless areas where patches of living reef colour the shallows. What a magnificent fish. There we go, beautiful little spotty. You can see the spots on him there. Hence the name, Spotty Mackerel. If you want to adventure here, consider coming soon. New owners have big plans for Keppel, and the Capricorn region of central Queensland has just recorded the biggest jump in tourism visitation anywhere along the entire Great Barrier Reef. So step outside and get yourself a slice of this natural wonder. Here's a good tip for you if you want to catch your own bait. Now it's a lot of fun to go out there and catch it. You never know what you're going to get unless you're specifically targeting something. And today I'm going for the old beach worm. Now there's a lot of different worms out there. We're talking squirt worms, blood worms, mud worms, beach worms, wrigglers, and of course the old garden worm. But this particular one here allows me to use this. A good old fashioned stinky. Let's go beach worming. So when you're worming, it's important not to have anyone walking in front of you, dogs, kids, anything like that, because the pressure on the sand can pull the worm back down. But also at the same time, always work with the water. If the water's down further, walk down to the water. Without waving that bait into any water, you're not gonna see the worms coming up. So follow the water. Water comes up past you. If it's up to your knees, walk back so it's shallower. You're creating more ground where the worm will be. Most surf beaches around the country will hold beach worms. In goes my tidbit. Index finger goes in. I feel him between my index finger and thumb. I pull the tidbit away. He'll then arch his back and I grab and out he comes. It's important to grab them when they've got that tidbit of bait in their mouth. They arch their back and that's when all their legs have released. So it's an easy pull out. If you take your time, you've grabbed him, Unfortunately, a lot of strength does come to the worm and they'll retract back into the sand. And at that stage is when you can either break the worm or lose the worm. They slip through your fingers, they are slippery. So when they arch their back, they've released and in one swift motion, out of the sand they come. A beautiful, beautiful bait to use. And the next step what I do here is I like to clean the worms because when they come out of the sand, they're full of slime and you don't want to keep that on them, you want to take that off. So the best way that i found and that uh, my dad taught me was to put them in just some semi-dry sand like so and just move them around like that. And all I do here is just pull out one worm at a time and take that sand off like that and just put them down like that. Okay, so now I've done that, I've got with me just a couple of bags. Just sandwich bags is more than enough. I open those up, I'll put in a bit of dry sand, or semi-dry sand, like so, and I'll just put in the worms. It's important to keep the worms separated when you put them in, otherwise they'll go in a big knot. So just shake them around. I'm going to put four, five worms actually in each bag. A Little bit more sand. Five or 10 minutes, we caught ourselves 10 beach worms. The stinky is exactly that. I'm going to take that home, put it into a bag, and I'll reuse it. It's totally fine. There's no reason why you should discard that at all. But I'll tell you what, it's a good bait. And there's your tip for today, catching beach worms. And some tips for beach worming. You'll need a stinky bait with a lanyard of rope, 
a good runoff. Where the water recedes back into the gutter, polarized sunglasses to cut out the glare, a good lookout so you can see the worms sticking their head out of the sand, a small tidbit of bait that entice her to get them up and remember to pull them once they've arched their back. And right after the break, soaring into the sky with this young wakeboarder. So this morning we've got an exclusive for you. We're joined by the world junior champ wakeboarding, Mackenzie. Thumbs up, you're ready to hit the water. Yep. It's a beautiful 24 degrees, so in you go. Uh, and also, the rope length. Tell me, Ryan, how long does the rope have to be? So, depending on the rider's ability, someone like Mackenzie will be running somewhere between 75 to 80 foot. Someone just beginning would be around that 60 to 55 mark, just depending on the wake size and the ability of the rider. Okay, now we've got a bit of pressure. She pops right up. You need to make sure you always go off the top of the wake so you get the nice pop for the flip and then depending on what flip you do is depending on what sort of rotation you do. On certain flips on like a front roll you tuck in and you roll so you use your body to like tuck and do that okay. but then on other flips such as a back flip you extend your whole body like whole body out and throw your head back. So that's the tricky aerial stuff covered but what do we do about the basics? How do you simply stand up? Yeah, otherwise, if you pull your arms in, you're just gonna fall straight back right. and you'll slide straight out. Okay. So you need to keep everything nice and soft and strong and you should just pop straight up out of the water. One of the most important things is if you're in a busy thoroughfare or waterway, make sure that you're in an area that you can wakeboard, of course. Yes, definitely. Um, the driver's gotta have really good communication with you. So yeah. what do you do when you come off? There's hand gestures to say, hey, I'm okay, or keep yeah. a lookout? Or... Yeah, so if you come off pretty hard, you generally just sort of like put your hand up or give the boat a bit of a wave so they know that you're okay. Otherwise, they'll come back to you in a hurry. Yeah. And then if you fall off and you're done, you don't really want to ride anymore, you just tap your head, because that means like go home and get in the boat. Well, from that note, we're done. <laughs> so. If you're talking about fishing forensics, it's all about looking and locating what's in the area before you go and target it. For example, we're, today we're looking around for flathead, telltale signs, and I've got with me Nathan Inwood from Anaconda at Rockhampton. Nate, we're on the uh, salt pans, the sand flats, just out of Yapoon. Mate, tell us, what are we looking for here? Basically, you tell everyone. you're looking for lies where the flathead have been lying when the water runs over them, on the outgoing tide most times, and there. You can actually see them from where they lie. There's not just one there, we've got them all around here. So come over this way, there's another one here in this little area. There's a and big there's sucker over here. Big one over here. It's probably the same fish, you reckon, mate. So he's probably yeah. around a maybe a 55 centimetre fish. You can see that distinct coffin line as it comes around from the flathead. So his pectoral fins through here, his tail will be down here, and he's lying. Now most of the lies are facing this way, therefore he's here when the tide is high. This obviously is covered up. He's waiting for the small fish to come through. Now when it comes to lure choice, what are you running there mate? I'm running an a eco gear. So it's basically a smaller bait fish profile, which is what the flathead will be, will be running here. at the moment, yeah. And I'm using a small Rapala Shad Deep and of course with that there it allow me to get down of course it resembles a whiting which is what these particular fish are after. They're not just here they're littered all across this whole bank so fingers crossed low water they're in the channel we'll have a look but there's today's tip on fishing forensics.
Stay right where you are. Plenty of action to come up as we head north for something truly special on Step Outside. Cairns, gateway to the tropics, a fisherman's heaven, whether you're offshore, in the rivers or the impoundments, and a place I love to visit. Now, one of my favourite pastimes of fishing, the method that I love to do, it gives me some sort of relaxation when I'm out fishing, and it is using a bait caster. You can really get it in there and flick it into the snag and get that lure working well. It's all straight back to the hand. I love it. I'm using a Corrado here, of course, a Zodius or Katana rod, something like that will be simple to use as well. And I'm using 30 pound Power Pro or Koriki braid. So anything of those calibre will be fine. Obviously, 30 pound on this little outfit, it means we're going for big fish and of course when we're talking big it also means I'm going to be using this because this is going to be powering that and that is a sup. Let's go sup fishing. Yeah how's this for tranquility? Now I've got my sup with me the man by 11 foot 2. We're on the banks of the dams in the backwaters of Cairns. You want to be up high I do not recommend going sup fishing in crocodile infested waters. Clearly common sense prevails in that scenario but We'll just launch off the bank. It is a little bit muddy, but we will get in there and have a crack. Sometimes it is best to go on your knees to get through the weed and then just stand up when you get out. And up we go. So from here, just hold the rod and look for your snags and away we paddle. So the uh, sun's still up high, but it's gone down behind these bays. So we've come up into this nice little shallow area. Away from the wind, it's a lot more shadowed, so a lot more shade. So these trees coming all out through here, there's lily pads. An ideal spot for what I'm going to be using here is just a straight surface lure. And of course, if we can just get it banging in there, I think we might come up trumps. It should be a lot of fun. Now, barramundi in this particular lake here have been caught in excess of 50 kilograms. I don't think that'll happen today for me, but uh, hey, look, anything with a bent rod will be a lot of fun. This is a solid barra. Okay, so he's nailed that, that surface lure, just like a little stick bait. Now he's gone around the, the weeds, but we can go to him in the shallows where no other engine can. You're gonna get all these weeds caught up around your lecky. Now he can take me wherever he wants. That's the problem. So what I'll do here, if you're mackerel fishing, again, anything else is get down low because from here we're going to pull him onto the board like so. Hello champion. How are you today? I always carry with me in my pouch is a tackle box of goodies of course and the trusty D hookers. Have a look at that for a barra. Unhook. And hook, job done. So the lure I was using is just a straight surface walk the dog style of lure. A really, really cool little thing just to get out there and have a crack. It's a river to sea brand. And of course, what did justice here was a Zodius three to five kegs with a nice little 70 Corrado reel. And uh, I'll tell you up here in the flats, it did well, but there we have it. And this fish has a tag. So what actually happens here just move this away a bit, is what happens here. We can record the data on this and we'll get a fair idea as to what this fish has done. When it was stocked and also the, uh, the life activity of it, where it was let go, could have been let go three bays away, and this fish here could be a couple of years old. And some tips for stand-up paddle boarding for Barra. 
or maybe just fishing. 11 foot sup board, in this case it was the Mambo. A six kilogram Shimano combo, bait caster a spin, up to you. A waterproof tackle bag's important. Polarized sunglasses, so you can see where you're going. Always look ahead when you're casting, otherwise you'll lose your balance. And when landing the fish, get down low. Coming up on next week's show, we chase around with some live bait and then target the beautiful, tasty flathead. A delicacy amongst many Aussies. And of course, we'll get out there on the sup, stand up paddleboard, but this time with a twist, we put a fin underneath it and we go foil boarding. And of course, there's a whole lot more all coming up next week on Step Outside. <laughs>